Let's talk about it. The most overrated champions in Raid Shadow Legends. I am Matt Cap, and this is another video, of course, on Raid Shadow Legends. And today I want to do the very polarizing job of telling you the five champions that I think are the most overrated in this game today. It is amazing how much people have this strong affinity for champions they use within a game. This means nothing. What I say does not change your teams at all. And yet, I promise you I'm going to trigger a lot of people. And I love to. And it's fun to do. So let's get right into it with the five most overrated champions in Raid Shadow Legends. Now, I do want to put a caveat. You, Everyone must understand. Well, maybe you don't want to understand. That's your own problem. But... If I say someone's overrated, does not make them bad, does not make them unuseful. It just means they're overrated. I'm going to give you a perfect example. I'm going to say Tom Brady is overrated. He is still one of the best quarterbacks ever to play the game. But people have elevated him on a level that is far surpasses anything that is of his own actual control. He's a talented, accurate passer who can read defenses very well. He's also had a top 10 defense for the last two decades and actually took a pay cut to ensure that his offensive line stayed paid and stayed keeping him safe. How many, how many quarterbacks, think of Dan Marino, what kind of teams he could have put together with his talent level and those same teams. I'm not saying Tom Brady's bad. He might still be the best quarterback of all time, but because he's got so many Super Bowl rings, everyone elevates him on this on the status of Tiger Woods, who revolutionized the game. They didn't make rules, except for maybe the tuck rule, for Tom Brady. They made these rules for Tiger Woods. They extended the length of courses. They made uh, weird bends going the opposite way of what they normally do, specifically because of what Tiger Woods could do. Jack Nicholas, the same thing way back when he played. These players changed the game. I wouldn't say Tom Brady's changed the game, even though he might be, well, like I said, the best quarterback of all time. He is not at the status and elevation of a Wayne Gretzky or a Bobby Orr or a Tiger Woods, for those of you in the States who really need to understand the difference, right? So, this is what I'm going to do for Raid Shadow Legends. These are still great champions. All of them are still champions. I love to have on my team, but I'm going to have Adder. So let's just talk about it. I'm not going to put them in a team like I did with the five best champions because you don't need to see what they do. You just need to hear me rant about them. The first champion I want to talk about is probably the most controversial champion I'm going to say, and that is from the Dark Elves, and it is... I can't even believe I'm saying it. You guys are all going to flip out. But it's Madam Saris. She is overrated. And I'm going to tell you why. Number one, she is best served in the arena because of the cooldowns on her abilities. This is a four-turn cooldown with books. It has a decreased defense and attack. That is fine. It's been, de it's been nerfed to two turns from three turns. This here has a 50% chance. And she prioritizes it unless you use an actual you have to use one of the slots for your preset teams to make sure she doesn't use it that's very wonky and the 20 percent chance to put a fear with it's got one debuff two debuff this is all kind of wonky she is a great champion don't get me wrong but i think that outside of the arena there are way better options out there than just madam saris is she bad no but given the choice between her and some of the other options, I would choose the other options simply because in all PvE content, except for maybe the highest levels of Doom Tower, maybe, uh, well, and of course Arena, uh, you don't need a strip champion off the bat. So here you have a champion that's a strip champion that is also debuffing when you can just bring in a debuffer that you have probably have built if you have pulled any of them you could even bring in someone like war maiden yes she doesn't do a decreased attack but decreased attack is also not as much needed when you're going first and you're controlling the pace and the direction of your fights i don't think she's as important as people make her out to be and even in the arena i will challenge you to find platinum level teams or even gold five level teams that even bother with madame stress i have two they're highly built don't use either of them. I have not even used them for months. I don't even think mine are, are fully geared anymore. And yes, I am an endgame account, but that just goes to show you how far she falls off the cliff compared to when she was first introduced. This is a case of a champion who was what they said she was back then, but because of how the meta's changed and because of how the meta continues to change, she has fallen off a little bit, yet her quote-unquote desired worth is still absolutely the same as it was before, and I think it's overrated. Number two on my list, this one hurts my soul 
because I have been a staunch defender of these two next two champions. But fair is fair. If I'm going to call one of your favorite champions overrated, I'm going to call one of my favorite champions overrated. I highly apologize for this, Saf, but Ethos is one of the most overrated champions in Raid Shadow Legends right now. He is still phenomenal. Don't get me wrong, he has tons of damage. He is great in all areas of the game. He is the best campaign farmer on Nightmare in the game. But who cares? Nightmare campaign farming has become a thing largely the past. A lot of endgame accounts are starting to build teams that can farm while getting actual resources like Spider, like Dragon, like even Ice Golem. I've heard people doing it. So if you can do that there and double dip as it were, why would you need a Nightmare campaign farmer? The reality is the campaign has been uh, put on the back burner further and further and further as far as leveling champions. Also, the amount of brews we get now compared to before. So you can just level champions up with brews now. All the tournaments and events that go on back to back overlapping each other. On top of it, he is a first nuke. Nuke first, ask questions later. He doesn't have a lot of HP. He doesn't have a lot of defense. His speed is very decent, but not crazy. So you have a champion who needs to hit hard first. Well, reaction gear, stone gear, all these different sets, all these go second teams, all the different things that they've put into the arena makes a person who used to be the de facto number one in the arena fall down to maybe six or seven on the list of nukers. I would use my Trunda over him. I would probably use my Foley. I do use my Foley over him because he's got. they've all got these other mechanics. Block Revive, for example. You've got Trunda who's got way more HP, way more survivability on this. Plus, she's got some really unique mechanics that allow you to really punish people for being extremely high HP. All in all, Ethos, while still an amazing champion, might even still be a top 10 champion. But I think the level of worth that I've given him and a lot of other ones, Saffron, have given him, he has diminished significantly in that time. And yet, the people who do love him still put him on a pedestal. And I gotta tell you, unfortunately, it's one that is overrated. Number three on the list also hurts my soul because I have been a defender of this also in the same area, and that's Tayrell. Tayrell was the best champion for the clan boss three years ago. Three years ago, this champion was the champion. He's a defense-based champion. He has a defense down. He has turn meter break, and he has a decreased attack on his A1. The problem is the more and more champions that have been added to this game have made Tayrell less and less of importance to teams. Now, you get him, still good, like the other two champions, still a phenomenal champion, but his worth has dropped and yet his desire has not. People still speak of Tayrell like he is here and really he is down here. There are now at least two, maybe even arguably three, including Madam Saris, that do more than him because they have the defense down and attack at 100% at AoE on the same skill that is Duck, that is uh, Stagnite, and of course Madam Saris. And I'm, I might even be missing a couple. They just keep adding them. So when you look at their kits and what they can do, and then you look at what Tayrell brings to the table, especially now that Clan Boss has significantly moved to two other strategies as the de facto standard, either Unkillable or Infinity. And those those teams are one key teams, and Tayrell just isn't a part of that equation anymore. Yes, he's good, but the problem is, when you combine the fact of his, he's, a, he's affinity, so he's not a void like Madame Saris, and you look at just the fact that there's so many other champions that have been brought in, that has made his stock fall from the number one. If you look at it in the early days, everyone pretty much agreed that he was the number one epic in the game. He is not the number one epic game. It would be tough to say he's in the top 10 anymore, and yet people still talk about him like he is the one of the best in the game, including myself have been guilty of it, but uh, you know, look at his low speed, look at his low HP, uh, and, and even his low crit damage, considering he can do pretty good damage on defense. He just isn't what he used to be, so he's number three on my most overrated list. Number four. This is a personal one for me, because I have never understood why people talk about him as such a good champion. I have had him for a while, I didn't fuse him, then I pulled him, I have multiple, and that is Brachus. Brachus is overrated. I'm telling you this right now. 
He is a single target nuker, which means in all PvE content, he is average at best. Yes, you can sort of use him in the Fire Knight, though Allure, an epic, is better at doing everything else that you don't need to worry about this multi-hit. His fear procs are very, very sus at best. If you are guaranteeing or you are relying on a fear proc to help you through something, you are doing it wrong because that fear proc will end up, I promise you, will end up uh, disappointing you in the arena. So here's the deal. He gets this extra damage when it is below 20%. He revives and gets an extra turn, but there's something broken in his mechanic where when he dies and someone else has that extra turn, for example, Rodos, Rodos gets the extra turn before he does. So he does not preempt any currently uh, acting mechanics. So Rodos kills him with his uh, with his A2, or sorry, A3. He comes back alive, and then Rodos kills him with his A2. Now there is a weak affinity, but he's not the only champion that does that. Plus there's more and more block revive in the game. And this way, Blood Twin will just nuke him out of the water it's not a problem and oh you can say well you put him in swift parry but even if he gets to go so i have a four-man team including kaimar as my lead he gets to go he takes his extra turn kills my kaimar so what that's it for him then i have three other champions one of which is a trunda or a magnar or whoever that just nukes this guy out of the water he is a gimmick at best he has been a gimmick since the beginning. He was meta in the arena for about five minutes until people figured out it's too easy to counter him, and he is just not good. In Faction Wars, while he will help you through, he is still a single target nuker, so not the best option out there. The only saving grace is when he dies, he does revive, which will help you on the boss. But overall, I think he's a very underrated champion for a legendary champion that you need to put books in as well. Those are not cheap books to be able to put in for him to do everything you need to do. I don't like him. I don't think he's very strong. I just pulled him on my free to play account, which is why I say it's a bit of a personal thing. I'm not gonna use him because I have Magnar and I would I would take Magnar 100 out of 100. I have Ninja, I would take him out of 100 out of 100 times. I have Mashaled, I would take him 100 out of 100 times over this champion. He is a dud in the grand scheme of things. I don't even think he's a good champion, let alone overrated. I don't think he's good. He's middle of the pack at best. Uh, and yet I still see so many people saying, oh, I got a Brachus. Well, I am sorry. You will be disappointed one day too. My final one, and this one's probably controversial as well. And I think it's just because the over-reliance on this champion to be good, when the reality is there's too many ways to counter it. And that is the Knight's Revenant epic champion, uh, Skullcrown. Skullcrown is a nuker who was a, a stalwart in the game for so long. The problem is, in order for her to do what she needs to do without all the different ways you can counter her, Tormund for the freeze, you can strip and, uh, and stun, you can uh, sleep, you can attack down. There are so many different ways you can counter her. Blender is a thing of the past. Again, with go second team, she needs to nuke. So even with a go first team like mine, I nuke her. She's still alive, but all I need to do is bring in even the slivers of shields and she is not going to kill me. I have seen some pretty gimmicky ones where she's in a counter attack. She's got the counter attack, uh, uh, accessories all just everything about her counters and maybe if you get lucky but that is so much RNG just to have a champion who might kill still a great champion for the early game still a great champion in uh, arena up to maybe gold one but I say that she is still overrated in that people still talk about her as one of these top tier arena champions and she is way down the list there are epics that have surpassed her uh, and definitely there's a lot more legendaries now than before that even without books can do more than she can plus you add the fact that there's more block uh there's more people who have built block buffs simply because of hydra so there's more and more champions that are a simple counter for this old mechanic of trying to get her to take an extra turn um not to mention the fact that they just built Lyris, leorius who even I think he's a little bit overstated, but I wouldn't say overrated because he is that good. Uh, just does everything so much better. Yeah, he's a Void Legendary should, but Skullcrown can't compete to that. So if people are thinking, well, Skullcrown's just a poor man's Leorius, it's just simply not true. There's too much that he does that she doesn't, and she just doesn't hit as hard as she needs to to be at that level anymore. So while if you pull her, I would still say, hey, I absolutely build her. She's going to serve you very well on a free-to-play, low-spend account. I don't think she's as good as everyone says she is. 
She certainly isn't as good as she used to be three years ago when she was introduced. Much like Tayrell, uh, she's been relegated by the fact that there's been so much more added to this game that unfortunately counters the what the thing that she is good at doing. So there are my top five. Those are my top five overrated. I know that they are going to be... Um, I think a lot of people will be pissed by some of those, and I'm sure most of you won't agree. Feel free to disagree in the comments down below. Not a problem. This is, hey, it's just my opinion. You can have your own opinion, and I love to hear from you, so let me know. Also, please like and subscribe. Let's just keep this going. Have a good time here. And uh, most importantly, uh, I said it in the, in the last video I did, but I'll say it again. Um, my thoughts and prayers go out to the people of Ukraine. Uh, and honestly, to the to the general people of Russia, there are a lot of people. Uh, I just read a story about Abramovich, who used to own Chelsea. He put them into a trust group, and now he's selling them and giving the proceeds to the Ukraine. He has taken a lot of a flack just because he's a billionaire from Russia, and he does not agree with what's going on. He doesn't like what's going on. He is absolutely angered by the by what is going on there. So keep in mind that. There is, a, there is a small group of people headed by Vladimir Putin who think that this Ukrainian invasion is a good idea. But the majority of, of Russia is not is not about it. They don't like it, they don't appreciate it. And it's really, it's really sad to see a, a country that could have, that had built itself out of nothing, uh, both from a cold war where the country basically collapsed uh, and then again with a financial crisis in 2006 and 98 and now here we are again and they're just putting themselves into a you know one person is putting them into a, a, such a shitty situation so uh, you know and of course the people of Ukraine man oh man my heart bleeds for you uh, just please stay safe please you know if you can uh, like many of us have done in the content creator program donate uh, there's plenty of different uh, ways you can help uh, donate to keep uh, the people of Ukraine uh, alive and well and fed and and, and everything else. So um, my hope is that something happens to either change a megalomaniac's mind or uh, or something happens to that person to change the rest of that small group of people who seem to be supporting him's mind. So um, thank you for watching the video. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.